What do you see? Shh. Give him a minute, comes Maria's harsh voice. My eyes are closed. In one hand, I have a thumbtack hovering over a map of the state. In the other, I have a picture of the girl. She's got long blonde hair, bright green eyes, and a wide smile. Alexis is her name, and she's been missing for five weeks. Then it comes in flashes. Welcome to Southland. An ash tree. A street sign. Six, eight, nine. A, a blue house. I'm taken to the basement, which has one long mirrored wall that reflects the room back onto itself. But it's cold, and there's a darkness hovering around me. It follows me as I move around the room. My eyes fly open, and without having to think about it, I stick the thumbtack into the map. She's in the basement of a blue house, 689 Ash Street in South Lane. Carl writes as I speak. Did you see who took her? No. Did you see her? He asks me. I glance at Maria, who shakes her head no. What is it? Maria steps forward. He has been trained not to see or interact with the people he is looking for. Why? Carl asks, setting his pen down. Because sometimes the people can see him, and that gets very dangerous. Maria's mouth settles into a thin line, as if she's daring Carl to ask another question about it. Well, it really doesn't matter. What you've given us is more than enough to start. I'm going to alert the police. Behind Carl's desk, there's a long mirror, and I can see myself. Gray eyes and long dark hair. High cheekbones with a scar on my right cheek and pale skin from years of living in the labs. Carl stands up from his desk and reaches out to shake my hand, which I don't take. Sometimes touching other people shows me things I don't want to see. Maria takes it instead with a grim smile. I hope you find her. Come on, James. I follow her out into the car. That's sitting outside Carl's office. He was hired as a private detective by Alexis's parents after the police declared her a runaway. She was more difficult than usual, I tell Maria, once we're driving away. The sun has begun to set, casting us in a warm glow. How do you mean, she asks, her brow furrowed. I don't know. It was just dark. But once we get back to the lab, we'll run some tests and make sure you're okay. Okay, I sigh, because that's the opposite of what I want. Tests are horrible. They take my blood, spit, and hair. They stick wires to my head and induce visions. And once it's all over, they send me back to my room alone and isolate me for 24 hours. In the concrete room, in the wiry mattress. I lean my head against the window and close my eyes, hoping I can escape this life for just a few minutes. I dream about the first testing I remember. I'm four, wearing my favorite t-shirt. Maria is next to me with her clipboard and the doctor is kneeling in front of me, adjusting the last of the electrodes. James, now just close your eyes and think of this man. You're gonna find him for us, okay? The doctor leads me to a chair where I look closely at the picture of the man. He's old, with dark hair and a scar running from his left eye to his chin. It happens almost instantly. My eyes are closed, and the images are flashing in my mind. I see him. He's sitting on a couch, eating a sandwich. I take a step closer to him, and his head snaps up to meet my gaze. I freeze. Who the hell are you? He screams, jumping up from the couch. He smashes his plate against the coffee table, taking a hold of a long shard, and throws his arm out towards me. I feel a sting across my cheek and immediately start screaming. There's a rush in my stomach like I'm falling, and when I open my eyes, I'm back in the lab room. Maria is holding me, trying to calm me down. There's warm liquid on my face, and when I feel my cheek, my hand comes away red. I wake with a start, and reflexively, my hand goes to the scar on my cheek. We've pulled into the lab, and a guard opens my door for me. Welcome home. Escort him to the labs. We need to run tests. Oh, yes, ma'am, the guard says to Maria with a nod of his head. He takes a hold of my elbow and steers me down the hall towards the elevator, where we'll descend to the basement. The hospital gowns fit me now. It's been 13 years since that first testing, so I've gotten used to the chemical smell that hangs in the air. Almost done, the technician says, watching the vial fill slowly with my dark blood. 
I found the best way to get through these tests is just to watch myself in the one-way mirror. It keeps me focused, keeps me present. How's my favorite patient? The doctor asks, waltzing in with Maria. I heard you've had a busy morning. Maria's phone starts to ring. Oh, excuse me. She steps out into the hall with the technician, leaving me with the doctor. Yeah, I tried to find a missing girl. Well, Maria told me what you said about it feeling off. We're going to test your blood now, but everything else seems normal. Can you tell me more about that feeling? I didn't see her. Alexis, I mean. But looking for her was cold. Freezing, almost. I felt shaky, and it was dark. Was it nighttime? He asked, his voice taking a condescending pitch. My eyes narrow. It wasn't physically dark. It was just... I don't know how to describe it. I feel my face warm with embarrassment. Well, that's okay. We're going to get you in the next room, give you some people to find. Maria rushes back in. Doctor, excuse us, James, that was Carl. Alexis wasn't where you said. They need you to try again. Maria, I think we need to test before he tries again. No offense, but this is more important than your tests, doctor. James, get changed. We're meeting Carl in South Lane. Maria and I head to South Lane to meet Carl. Well, there you are. Come on, Carl barks, marching over to Maria and me. We're standing outside the blue house I saw in my vision, 689 Ash Street. Police are crawling all over the place, and on the porch sits a man in handcuffs. He's glaring at the officers roaming around. That's our suspect, Carl says, as if he could read my mind. I follow behind him, and we head slowly to the basement. It's a dark room with no windows, but one wall opposite the stairway is covered in mirrors. It's the same as in my vision. I don't know why she isn't here. This is exactly what I saw. Well, it's impossible. He's moved her since then. Carl glances at Maria cautiously before continuing. I know you said you don't find people directly, but James, Alexis is just 15. She's a freshman in high school and just got her driving permit. Your minute of discomfort could save her life. Well, this girl has a life something I never had. She probably has a big family that loves her and friends that adore her. She'll learn to drive and go to college and get married. How could I live with myself if I didn't try everything I could to find her? Absolutely not, Maria interjects. It's okay, Maria. I'll do it. James, Maria, I'll be careful. I need her picture, I tell Carl, and he immediately pulls it out of his pocket. And silence. Everyone stop talking, Carl yells, and the room falls into silence. I take her picture and I close my eyes. I'm plunged back into the coldness, the darkness. I'm pulled to a far corner of the basement, and in a second, I'm thrown beneath the concrete. That's when I see her. The skin around her face is translucent and pulled tight against her bones. Her green eyes are wide and frozen. Her hair is matted with blood, and her mouth is open a permanent scream. She's dead. But before I can leave, the cold takes over and envelops me, and I feel her lifeless, bony hands reaching out and grabbing me. I feel the rush and pull myself back. The room is silent except for a surge of piercing screams. James! James! Maria cries. I stop, realizing the screams were mine. But something's not right. My body is achy, and the hairs on my arms are raised in panic. The darkness is still there. I can feel it settled around my shoulders like a weight, watching me. My heart is pounding against my chest, and the cold has wrapped itself around me. It feels like someone hovering right around me, taking up the air I need to breathe. What did you see? Where is she, James? Carl pleads. I point to the corner of the room where a swatch of new carpet sits. She's buried under the floor. I managed to choke out. She's been dead for days. I'm so sorry. Carl's face falls, and Maria puts an arm around me, pulling me away from him. I hold back and sob. Her eyes flash through my mind, and a shiver runs down my spine. It's okay. You tried your best. We stand in front of the mirrored wall, and I watch the reflection as some forensic scientists start swabbing the area. Then I look back to myself, and I have to stifle a scream. Because it's not my face I see staring back at me. It's Alexis.